We've been talking about the name of Jesus, that God has given him a name above every name, and at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. We want to talk more about that wonderful name this morning. Glory, glory to God. Philippians 2 is the scripture we, uh, we took our reading from. Let's just go there again briefly. Philippians 2, 6. Who being in the form of God, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of a cross. Wherefore God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Now, the Bible reminds us, one of the thoughts we want to take on this morning is that the name of Jesus is a reminder that Satan has been brought to nothing. The name of Jesus is what? A reminder that Satan has been brought to nothing. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 6. How be it? We speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in the misery, even the, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they will not have crucified the Lord of glory. That word in verse 6, the princes of this world that come to nothing, that word not in the Greek also means useless, entirely idle, abolish, seize, destroy, do away with none without effect, fail, pull down. It means they've been brought to nothing. In John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world you have tribulation and trials and distress. And frustration, but be of good cheer, take courage, be confident, certain, undaunted, for I have overcome the world, I have deprived it of power to harm you, and I have conquered it for you. The princes of this world, Satan and his cohorts, Jesus brought them to nothing. When somebody has been brought to nothing, Every time you use the name of Jesus, you are reminding the devil, you, Mr. Devil, you are now zero. Hallelujah. You have been brought to what? Not. Nothing. Zero times hundred is what? Zero times one thousand is what? So if one thousand demons gather against you, they are boss has been brought to nothing. They themselves have been brought to nothing. No matter how you multiply zero, it will be zero. 
I want you to know this morning, no matter what you are battling or you are facing right now, they have been brought to nothing. The Bible says they've been brought to naught. They've been brought to zero. And every time the enemy comes against you, he may come very strong. You need to remind him, remind that situation this morning. Your faith needs to be speaking this morning that you have been brought to nothing. And I want you to know, child of God, this enemy may look aggressive towards you. He may look like he's going to knock you out. But the Bible tells me that the princes of this world have been brought to nothing. And because they've been brought to nothing, whatever is gathering against you in this season, no matter how big the need is in this season, that situation has been arrested by the Lord Jesus Christ. I say to you, they've been brought to nothing. You are not coming down like the rest of them. That thing has been brought to nothing. And when something has been brought to nothing, is only a shadow. The shadow of a dog barking that has been caged should not frighten you. Satan may be screaming at you. He's been brought to nothing. You know, in America, when, when the slaves were freed, they made a law, the Emancipation Proclamation, which means every slave could go free. They could leave. And one slave, when he got a copy of, the, of that thing, said, I'm leaving. And the slave owner pulled out a gun and said, if you take another step, I will fire you. What did that um, slave do? He went and got a copy of the document that said he has been free. I want you to know there's a document in heaven. There's a document in the blood of Jesus. There's a document in the name of Jesus that says I have been set free. That says you have been set free. They may surely gather not by me. The problems may seem insurmountable, but I want to tell you that problem is zero. How many of you believe that Jesus died? How many of you believe that he rose again? How many of you believe that he gave you the victory? How many of you believe that that domestic situation would change because Jesus conquered it? Uh, if you believe Jesus conquered it, can you give the Lord a wave offering and a shout offering this morning? I want somebody to call that wonderful name of Jesus this morning. I want somebody to call that wonderful name of Jesus this morning. I want somebody to call the name of victory this morning. I want somebody to call the name that defeated the devil this morning. I want somebody to call the name that unlocks the door for you this morning. I want somebody to call that name of Jesus again this morning. I want you to speak Jesus over your family this morning. I want you to speak Jesus over your business this morning. I want to speak Jesus over your children this morning. I want to speak Jesus over your destiny this morning. That business will answer to the name of Jesus. Can you call that name one more time? Can you call that name one more time? Brothers, every time you speak that name, you remind them of their defeat. Please be seated for a bit. Have you watched football commentaries of late? When they do a substitution in football, a substitution in football. If somebody scored seven goals against you the last time, let's say Messi scored seven in one match against you the last time. When Messi is being brought in, the commentator will say, now here comes Messi, who scored seven goals against the opponent last time. Even his coming in will make you to begin to shake because you know he scored against you before and he can score against you again. Jesus is not trying to score again. He has scored forever for you. It's not about him scoring any new goal. When he scored that goal, they were paralyzed. And I'm telling you, no matter how bad it is, you need to keep declaring what Jesus has done for you. Is there a witness in the house of the Lord this morning? He brought them to nothing. So if 1,000 of them gather against you, they are still? If 2,000 gather against you, they are still? If 100,000 gather against you, they are still? Because zero times one million is? Because the devil is zero, all the demons following him, harassing you, they are? Give the Lord a hallelujah shout this morning. And let's take another thought. Thank you, Father. They've been brought to naught. The name belongs to family members and is a guarantee for answered prayers. This name belongs to what? 
family members. You know, the Jews were not used to calling God Father. Jesus brought that concept of Father. And there are about three times or so in the New Testament you see that word Father, Abba, Father. Let this cup pass over me. We have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of adoption where we cry what? Abba, Father. So you see a few times in the New Testament, um, John 16, 23 and 24 is about prayer. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will do what? He will do what? He will do what? He may or he will. John 20, 16 and 17. Jesus said unto her, Mary, she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Verse 17. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father. Somebody say, My Father and your Father. Okay, let's try with uh, uh, Eloho and Mrs. Uh, what's your own name now? I can't remember your name, but uh, Mrs. Babs. Turn to each other. Say, your father and my father are the same. Say it again. In real life, that can be a major crisis. <laughs> in real life, as you are sitting in church this morning, someone just turns to you and say, your father and my father are the same. And you have never seen them before. Wouldn't there be a problem? You start asking, where are you from? <laughs> Sorry, what is the name of your... Which local government do you belong to? Where did you grow up? What is your mother's? You may be thinking maybe the, you, you have somebody that they hid from you for a long time. So, when, thank you. When Jesus said this, this was, I mean, my father and your father. It's like, uh, Jesus used to say, how do you pray? Our Father who art in heaven. I'm going back to my Father, and you are not asking me where I'm going. But now I said, your Father, my Father, and your Father. That means you might have been born naturally, but by another birth, we have become related. You were born by your natural Father. Lord, help our faith this morning. Let's take it to another level. Who is a popular person in the world today now? One powerful man in the world, like who? Hmm? The man you've been envying. You wish you were related to him. <laughs> If that man were in church this morning and pulled you aside and said, I just found out that your father and my father are the same. You start, <laughs> what the Lord has done for me. <laughs> Especially in our society that is so family connected. Because if your father and my father are the same, how about your life has changed forever. So, uh, it's, it's my brother, even the people that are not directly related to us. Poverty is an orphan. Once the guy makes it in life, even if he's a third cousin, you say, ah, it's my own very, very own. So when Jesus was saying, my father and your father, what is Jesus saying? Another scripture, I think it's John 16, somewhere, he said, let them know that you have loved me, them, as you have loved me. What is Jesus saying? The same Father has begotten us. 
when you stand praying, it's as if I am praying. The audience the Father will give me, he will give you the same audience. I wish I would get a better amen today. The audience the Father will give me, he will give you the same audience. May I say to you, God has no grandchildren. He said, let us all come boldly to the throne of grace. The concept of father, slaves could not use that term in those days. The concept of father was endearment. Abba, father. Papa, hallelujah. Papa, my own father. Amen. How many of you have a child who is two years old or under? Two years old kids, three. You have. Have you noticed that? Is it a boy or a girl? It's a boy. Eh? Have you noticed that boy just enters your house anyhow? Does he knock the door to enter the room? Anything you are holding belongs to him. If you are eating corn, you will not say, Daddy, please, we just take corn. Am I, am I describing? How do I know that? Because all of us were like that one time. Because what belongs to Daddy belongs to me. We just take the corn, we will enter the room. Even if you have just made the bed, he will climb it and be jumping on the bed. He said, Junior, don't you understand that I just made this bed now? When you are eating food, when he eats his own meat, somehow if your own is still there, that piece of meat is in trouble because that child will just take that meat and, and he said, Junior, Junior, come on, stop that thing. He say, your meat is my meat. Your money is my money. If Nepal tariff should go off, up, that child doesn't care. He will leave the TV on because as far as he's concerned, his father is El Shaddai. Do you, do you understand me? <laughs> if you put plenty of milk on the table and you are eating a camu, drinking a camu, eating conflicts, if you don't measure for that child, he will just be pouring it. He will just be pouring it. He will just be pouring it because he believes his father is the God of the overflow. You see, that child has such a big image. Now, God wants us to come. You see, if you don't understand the love of the father, the way you will relate to him will be like a beggar. Yes. Father, we have come. Oh. Father, I do. Oh. Father, I remember. Oh. Father, oh. he said, come boldly. Jesus was, going, was first going to raise Lazarus from the dead. It was not a long prayer. He said, Father, I thank you that you have what? Heard me. How many of you know he's longing for you today? He's longing for you today. The Father is what? He's longing for you today. I said, the Father is what? He's longing for you today. I said, the Father is what? He's longing for you today. The Father is what? He's longing for you today. So even before you are asking him, he's already willing to help you. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord is running to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong. The Bible says faith walked by love. When you understand the heart of the father, the heart of the father may not be like the heart of your husband. You know some husbands, especially where money is concerned, they have to ask many times. Sometimes they have hope. I didn't describe any husband here, so don't look at me. Oh. I'm just talking my own. Don't make trouble for me. So you have to ask and ask and ask and tie face for them. No, but God says, come boldly. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. Come on. God said, I'm happy you are here. Come on. That's why children love grandparents. You know, grandparents will give children anything. God wants you to come boldly this morning. But when you come in that name, it's as though Jesus himself came. Can you imagine God denying Jesus anything this morning? If he cannot deny Jesus, he will not deny you. He said, whatever you ask the Father in my name. So I'm not, going, I'm not praying to God and say, God, I've been good. I've not done this. I'm, no, 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 no. Father, I am coming in the name of Jesus. It's as if Jesus is making that request. There's a difference between me giving you a note and say, go and see that person. Then say, okay, I am going with you. A note and me going with you is not the same thing. Jesus said, when you pray in my name, it's as if I'm standing with you before the Father and say, this my brother has a need. This my sister has a need. It's as if Jesus is praying. May God help our understanding. Amen. 
Hallelujah to Jesus. Let's look at another thing here this morning. So when we go in his name, it's as though Jesus was present there. You know, he, we represent him here. He represents us there. We represent him here. He represents us before the Father. Hmm. Knowing the name of Jesus opens the door to the supernatural and faith is automatic. Knowing the name of Jesus opens the door to the supernatural and faith is automatic. In Acts 3, 1 to 6, we just go to verse 6 because I think I have a lot on my plate. Okay. You know, remember the story of the man, beautiful gate, 40-year-old man. He's been there for a long time. Hmm? He's been begging there for a long time. He has been carried there. He's been lame from his mother's womb. Let me just read a bit. Verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, hot afternoon. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask arms of them that entered into the temple. This man was above 40 years old. So he wasn't... He, this, this problem has been there all his life. I'm here this morning to speak to problems that have been there for a long time. Oh, I say I'm here this morning to speak to problems that have been there for a long time. I'm here this morning to speak to stubborn problems. I'm here this morning to speak to hereditary conditions. I'm here this morning to speak to things that said I will not leave you. I'm here this morning to speak to things that have been recurring in your life like, like a recurring decimal. I'm here this morning to speak to that mountain that keeps recurring in your life that said I will not give way. I'm here this morning to say there is a name above every name. There is a name they must bow to. I'm here this morning to speak to fibroid. I'm here this morning to speak to that problem on top of your umbilical cord. I'm here to rebuke that infirmity in the name of Jesus. There is a name above every name for that back problem. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. For that eye condition, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. For everything that has to do with your glands, I rebuke in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every infirmity under the sound of my voice. Come out in the name of Jesus. Every problem in your reproductive system, excretory system, respiratory system, I come against infirmity, I come against disease. You will not die prematurely by the faith of Jesus in the name above every name. I rebuke that thing of hell. Come out in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you receive that, wave your hand and thank you the Lord for it. Now be seated and watch this. Who seen Peter verse 3? Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple, axe and arms, and Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. And watch what Peter said. And Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. Somebody says, Such as I have. Again, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Wow. Hmm. 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 Such as I have. Such as I have. Such as I have. 40 years, no change. They've been passing that road all the time. May God help our faith to rise this morning. They've been passing that road all the time. The condition remains stubborn. 40 years. The Bible said the man was over 40. But after Jesus rose from the dead, Peter and John said, I have. I'm not going to have. What do you have that is your own this morning? Does anybody have anything? That is your own, your pen, your car key, your phone. All right. It's your phone, ba? All right. If you gave Victoria your phone, do you start praying? Oh, Lord, I want to give Victoria my phone. Oh, Lord, I want to give Victoria my phone. 
No, Victoria, this is my phone. Check for something there. Did you pray about that? Um, what's that your name again? Stand up. Jacob, you came with your car key today. What do you have in your pocket that is your own? Your phone. If you gave that sister there your phone, do you pray about that? This one has stood up already. Her faith is strong. <laughs> you know, go carry phone from church. <laughs> but anyway, she has her own phone. Okay, you give your phone. Do you pray? It's your phone. When you begin to understand that the name is your name, the name is your name. It's your name. Faith becomes automatic. Eh? My brother, did you, is your car key in your pocket? Come, come. I've never used for illustration before. Come and do something. For, come and help me. Keep standing. If you want to give this guy to get something for you in your car, I say, this is my car key. Ah. <laughs> you're adding God bless you he's sending you to his car to collect something you're adding God bless you I, we are not that type of you cannot claim somebody's car in this church it's just for illustration <laughs> Pentecostal you don't they thank God <laughs> Pentecostal just they thank God so now give him his key back <laughs> When you gave him that key, was there any fear in your mind? You say, it's your, get, it's your car. So, okay, go and get something in my car. You don't say, hey, hey, as I want to give this key. Oh. Maybe the man will say, is it your car? You know it's your car. How many of you know the name of Jesus is your name? It's your family name. I, I, when you say to the Bolanta, it will not shake me because that's who I am. When you, know, when you use the name of Jesus, it's been given to you. Jesus has never used his name one day. He only gave us that name to unlock doors. Peter says, such as I have, what is my own? I am giving it to you, and I'm giving it to you as a spiritual legal tender to take what I need. I am giving you the name of Jesus to unlock the door as a spiritual legal tender. I am giving you the name of Jesus, and when you use that name that paid for everything, money will come to you. Money will meet money in your hand. Your children will be delivered. Promotion will come. What the enemy is planning against your family will stop the harassment of your children will stop because it's a family name as we use the name of Jesus this week every opposition of hell against our business against our family against our children they are coming down doors will be open such as I have 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 such as it is mine give I unto thee in the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a clap of friend this morning. Hallelujah. It is your name. When I asked Mrs. Babs what her name was, she was not saying, Father, it's my name. It's my name. It's your name. You just said it. Now, but watch this. A child, the first time you call a child, a baby, John, the child will not answer. But he doesn't know the name. Huh? After a while, the child will turn like this. Are you talking to me? When you keep saying it, saying it, after a while, the child will say, Mommy, why are you disturbing me? The same child you called the first time, the child was just like, a revelation that the name belongs to you. Faith will be automatically there. Such as I have. If I'm having two... Uh, mangoes, two plantain, two bananas, two pieces of yam in my hand. I bought it with my money. Jesus paid for that name to be our own. He said, it's now your name. Such as I have, give I thee. Eh? And he gives you the name. 
and you give that banana out or that plantain, you are not praying. You just know it belongs to me and I can give it to you. And when I give it to you, it will change your life. When Peter gave the name to the lame man, the beautiful girl, what happened to that man? He rose up. And I say, as you use the name this week, things that are dead, they're going to get a resurrection. In the name of Jesus. Well, that blessed me. Such as I have, give I thee. I have the name of Jesus. I have the name of Jesus. Ah, time has flown away. I have the name of Jesus. It's my spiritual legal tender to, to, to receive what Jesus paid for with his blood. I have the name. And when you use the name, 40 years! 4 zero. More than 40 years. That man had been in that condition. But when the person who, who knew how to use the name came, he said, you have been here for too long. I want to announce to every problem in your life right now, every mountain this week, every money that refused to be paid, I am coming with the name of Jesus against that mountain this morning. Every harassment in your family, everything that has been stopped for a long time, Oh, Rakabashaya Kalisto, in the Reka Sekeli, Maguria Tabasa Alianda, in the name of Jesus, the name that is the highest name, the name that belongs to the creator of the universe, the name that belongs to the sustainer of the universe, the name that belongs to the one who brought the devil to naught, the name that is above every name, the name that the Father gave, in that name that up upholds all things, that sustains all things, that destroyed the work of of the enemy. I'm commanding what is trying to destroy you and embarrass you. I'm commanding it in the name of Jesus. Be gone in Jesus' name. I said be gone in Jesus' name. I lose favor in your behalf. I lose mercy in your behalf. I lose grace in your behalf. You believe that? Lift your hand and thank him for it. Oh, Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we have prayed.